The Questonomicon Kickstarter is live! My stinky old nemesis Jacob, the dictator of XP Level 3, and his team of lovable nerds are trying their hands at a D&D 5e supplement. This project throws your players into 10 different stories, comprised of 30 adventures and divided into 5 unique themes. That's what you call diversity. Do you want to be like a cowboy guy? How about a funny little pirate person? Or maybe you're more of an angsty type. This book is perfect for early level adventurers and in my opinion a valuable tool when introducing new players to the game. And with every Kickstarter my friends do, there's a crazy amount of awesome side products and stretch goals. Go check out their Kickstarter if you can, give my old pals some love, and enjoy a video that took too long to edit. It's okay, it's good though, here we go. Have you or a loved one consumed a potion of healing and rolled the minimum amount? Then you may be entitled to compensation. Here at the Runesmith Foundation, we are dedicated to taking a dump on fantasy tropes and substituting our own original formula that is safe for your party to consume and enjoy. Today's topic is D&D potions, ranging far and wide from the illustrious Alchemist's Fire, or every other potion that just has a spell effect and that's it. In early game D&D, it states that you should only be giving your party mundane or consumable magic items, but because everything creative and cool can break the story early on, we just kind of threw in the towel and put some existing content into a bottled form. Let's run through some of the main potions before I explain why I pretend to be upset about it. Potion of Animal Friendship casts the spell Animal Friendship. Potion of Clairvoyance casts Clairvoyance. Potion of Climbing, you guessed it, spider climb but it's actually worse. Potion of Flying, Gaseous Form, Grow and Reduce, Healing, Heroism, but that's just a spell bless, Invisibility, and I've gone on too long because you clearly get the point. We have a couple that give you unique ways to deal damage, but I'll get to that later. So here's my statement, if we can already do it, and we can do it after every long rest, we don't need a bottle that does the same thing. I am stupid, D&D is overwhelming, and there's a lot to keep track of, so if I cast a spell that I have a potion for, it's entirely because I forgot that I had the potion, and I will always forget that I have the potion. I also really don't like magical cure-alls in fantasy and D&D, but that's a huge other gripe that's not really related to anything but healing potions. In my opinion, they detract from the gravity that heavy hits should have. But I truly digress. So now you're asking me, Logan, if you don't like potions or healing, why use them? That's a stupid question, and I'm building a straw man argument so I can make a point. Please don't actually think like that. D&D is multiplayer, and the more cool stuff that I have for other people, the better the game is gonna be. Banning things can quickly become as bad as not playing at all. A potion is liquid magic from Concentrate that is not permanent, which means we can do fucking anything with the idea. With the right ingredients, you can make a potion stronger than the wish spell in a good campaign. So to start, let's look at how they're made. Brewer's supplies? No. Alchemist supplies? Not unless you're making basic chemical reactions. That's real, in Xanathar's Guide you can identify potions, but not make them. Instead, in the DM's Guide, in pages 128-129, you can make them using two components. Money and power. I'm sorry, but actually f*** that. That makes me genuinely mad. To a mage and an alchemist and whatever other goddamn scholar that's read more than two books, market value is not magic value. Dirt, clay, and gold all have unique uses and are equally valuable in my eyes. So we take out these two pages and we burn them. Instead, I'll pull inspiration from real-world homebrewing. To brew non-magics, you need a sterile environment, tiny monsters, food for the tiny monsters, a big old jug with a valve that lets their farts out, and however long it takes for them to suffocate in their own piss that we drink for fun. Let's replace that sterile environment with someone's arcane ability, because magic and microbiology are only related in the Star Wars prequels. Let's replace the food with rare ingredients that I prefer you collect on an adventure from magic sources. And lastly is the catalyst. I think it would be really damn cool if there was a mother of potions, similar to the mother of vinegar. This part entirely depends on how magic works in your world, but we can use anything like specially crafted wands, maybe fragments of the weave, crystal shavings, or just the blood of a very specific monster. That'd be cool if somebody slew like the little pudgy glowing worm from Dark Souls and then their magic got infused into it. Accidental discovery of potions, just like all real human innovation. Now that we have an abstract recipe concept, we can scatter our world with ingredients books or let our players make their own from scratch. 
But, and I'll pat myself on the back for saying this, don't let them pick the potion's effect. Just let them pick the ingredients and the steeping or brewing time. Say a player uses the bark of a dryad, the oil from a talking truffle, and the scales of a blue dragon egg, and then they let it sit for two weeks. When they use it, you can creatively involve rapid plant growth, lightning, or some weird annoying effect from the mushroom out of spite. A good potion has contextual use. A great potion is useless. I think it's finally time that I tell you. In my old live game, Tesseract, I gave the party a bunch of crackpot magic items that they never used. One was called the Potion of Bees. I did not have a plan when I gave this to them, but here's some of the ideas that I came up with down the line. If it was consumed, the players would turn into a giant bee for one hour with similar stats to a giant eagle. If thrown, it would explode into a few swarms of bees. If it was left open, it would be an endless decanter of bees with one or four of them flying out every minute. If mixed into a delicious meal, serving a similar purpose to a salad dressing, the consumer's tongue and mouth would swell, making them mute for a few days. Or whatever else they did with it would be something bee-related, I don't know. Could have even had a command oh, word. Here's some random potions to close out the video off of my mentally unstable dome. Potion of the Bard creates an ear-shattering symphony when thrown, or it makes you sing everything for an hour if consumed. Potion of Society creates a miniature, fully functioning community led by a fascist regime when thrown. The, the little city fits it like a five-foot square. But if consumed, the wool is pulled back from your eyes and you get either a druid spell or a monk ability. Potion of Identity When thrown, you waste a perfectly good potion. But when consumed, you gain full authority of your physical body and your name for a minute. When the effect ends, any changes that you made also rewrite people's memories of you to fit those changes. Potion of Burning Instantly coats an object in an ever-burning flame when poured, but if consumed, you gain the ability to perfectly insult anyone for one hour. The kind of insults that'll ruin a person's day and dampen their entire week. Potion of Labor when consumed, there's a 50% chance you either gain proficiency in a skill, or you go into labor, giving birth to a 4-inch tall homunculus. These are all random word generator based, by the way. Potion of God. If you drink this, you recede into the bowels of the earth, your physical form no longer needed, and you reshape existence into an entirely new reality by your own design. The ingredients for that one is just one red pill. Okay, get out of here.